go to Baltimore and I'll be speaking there to several hundred lesbians, gays, bisexuals, transgenders. Um, I'm sure somehow it will get to Rome. Someone will hear about it. And they will not be in the least bit happy because, you know, the Pope has been so strong and so frequently on this subject. And I'll be reminded that I took an oath of, of fidelity to the Pope. So how can you do this? Um, yeah, I, I mean, the only reason they might not say too much is because they've given up on me already. You know, he's, he's, he's a rebel, a heretic, a what have you. Uh, but the pressure on any other bishop would be very, very heavy. Uh, yeah, he would be strongly reminded of oaths of fidelity. Uh, I mean, I, I, I have no worries about it. I, I, I believe that what I'm doing is right. I, I, I believe that gays have received a very bad time, a raw deal within the church altogether. And they need someone to to speak to them, to you know, to hold out a hand, to to be a bit more Christian. But it'll be interesting to see what happens. I decided when I discovered the Shoah, when I discovered the Holocaust, that I could do nothing about the past. Yeah. But I could do something about the future. Yeah. And that applies to anybody who is discriminated against. And as far as gays and lesbians are concerned, who cares? As long as they are loving, I think that is the main, the main issue that you do not use other people, you do not abuse them, and you act lovingly. And that is what I really like about your, your current book, the little book. Yeah. Um, it is, the focus is on um, love. The, the love's urgent longings. Yes. Yeah. I saw what you were going to say to them. You've read that? Yes, I've read the piece yeah, yeah. you sent me, which I put on, uh, yeah. online. I was going to ask you, I thought you'd have read it, but do you have any Anything, comedy, you know, anything you, you think oh, I ought to change before I give it? I see nothing. I think it is just exactly the right thing to say. Okay. Because the focus is not on the mechanics yeah. of sex, yeah. but on the person. importance of loving and yeah. caring. The persons in reality don't think that, that the magisterium any longer thinks in terms of procreation. I think the issue is papal authority. Mm -hmm. And popes can't be wrong, and so popes of the past can't be wrong. And I think that's the question, whether it's you're talking about sexuality, whether you're talking about the ordination of women, or a host of other subjects. The popes of the past can't be wrong, even if you're talking about clerical celibacy. The popes mm -hmm. of the past can't be wrong. And, and that's what I've called the prison of the past. Um, you know, the church put itself into a prison and threw away the key. And that's, I mean, I, I've said that, I'm quoting my own book, but I said that I could give up many rights and still live a good life. But one right I could not surrender is my right to be wrong. I need that right a hundred times a day. You know, sorry, I misunderstood. Sorry, I was insensitive. If I could never be wrong, well, uh, we can't, we couldn't exist. And I think a, not a, a church too needs, absolutely needs that right to be wrong. That's how we all get on. We we make mistakes and then we say sorry, and then we change and we we move ahead. It's the only way to do things. But the church is in that bind now, they can't be wrong. And the Pope is always afraid if he admits he was wrong on one thing, that would cause a loss of all papal authority. 
And I think that's why they're not even looking at, at um, questions like ordination of women, gays, or you know, that, because it all comes back to the Pope can't be wrong. That's why I titled the book Confronting Power and Sex. Mm -hmm. It's got to be both. I think that's been a big part of the poor response to abuse is, but we can't be wrong. We can't, you know, say we've, we've that wrong teachings have, have contributed in any way, and I believe they have. No. But to say, no, fidelity to the Pope, what happens if there is a conflict between my fidelity to the Pope and my fidelity to God's people? Mm -hmm or fidelity to God. And I thought, no, excuse me, if that happens, then I've got to be faithful to God, I've got to be faithful to God's people. They, of course, would say that there can't be a conflict between fidelity to the Pope and fidelity to God's people, but, but there can. As you would know, as I most certainly know now, and, and that's why I'm not worried by that that oath. But um, it's there. Bishops do take it seriously. Well, I hope I did. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I do think we have to come to a point where we say, oh, no, there's, there is a higher fidelity.